The topic this time around is file types. I'm going to be going through audio, video, images, and finally document file types. At the end of this section, I'm actually going to go over and explain why it's important to choose a specific file type based on the scenario you've been given. So I'm going to quickly go over the file types for audio first and then have a brief discussion about it. So we have M4A, which is an MPEG-4 audio file, just like we have MP4, which is MPEG for images and video. We have M4A for audio. We have a FLAC, is a free lossless audio codec. So lossless means that when it is actually compressed, you are able to go back to the original data. Now, if something is said to be lossy, then you cannot go back to the original data, right? So if we find an audio codec here which says lossy audio codec, you can never go back to the original. But lossless, it does make the file a bit smaller, so it is compressed, but you can always go back to the very original thing that was recorded in the studio, okay? Next one we have is, oh, MP3, probably the most common file format there is, and I will touch on this later on as well as to why this is important. And again, this is MP3 audio files, an MPEG audio layer 3 file format. Um, the key features of MP3 is the compression. It saves a lot of space, all right? We have MP4 audio file. Now, it is often mistaken for MP3 as video. Now, MP4 audio files not very common. MP4, as we know it, as we use in our day-to-day -day lives, is normally associated with videos and not audio, but there is MP4 audio as well. So we have WAVE, which are typically used in Windows systems, not widely used like MP3 is. Next, we have WMA, Windows Media Audio, again, used by Microsoft, used for Windows systems. And finally, we have AAC, Advanced Audio Coding, um, decently high quality. But I would say on this list, the one I would always, always go for if it's just a typical song or audio file I'm sending to someone is MP3. Reason being, most devices nowadays, most smart devices, iPods, iPhones, smart TVs, any Android phone, any tablet, they will most likely be able to play an MP3 file because it's the most popular file format in my opinion. So you choose MP3 for compatibility. You choose MP3 because of the size. It's a lot smaller than, let's say, something like a WAV. WAV files tend to be larger, even though they can be played on other devices, not as widely accepted, and they tend to be larger, sometimes five to ten times larger, right? Now, a typical MP3 song, I don't know, two, three, four minutes long, is roughly five to ten megabytes. That same song as a WAV file would roughly be five to ten times larger, right? Now, our ears using standard 20, 30, even up to 100 pound headphones might not be able to pick up all that information anyway. So MP3 might be the best one. Before I go any further, I'm going to explain what a codec is. I might have done it in a previous section before, but I might as well do it again. So codecs are essentially tiny pieces or tiny pieces of software or programs, apps, whatever you want to call it, that actually encode and decode audio and video. When you encode a video, as you can see, this person here is editing, right? When they're going to encode this video, what they'll do, they'll export the video and say, choose, let's say, MP4 as the encoding format, right? When they're decoding a video, we decode videos every day on YouTube and Amazon Prime, so on and so forth. What that means is that we actually have something on our devices, our phones, our tablets, or our laptops that's actually able to play the video that was exported by this person. So this person encodes, which means they create the video, they export the video. When you decode the video, you actually are able to watch that video or listen to that audio file back. Video file formats and codecs. We've already explained the codecs. I'm going to look at the file formats now. So everything here is a file format for video. Now, videos are essentially some combination of images being played in succession along with audio. Meaning, if something says it's 30 FPS or 30 Hertz, that means it has 30 frames per second. So in every one second of that video, you actually have 30 images being put together. And that's how we actually get video. 
So we have MP4. This is probably, again, the most common video format there is. Um, we have MOV, which just means movie file. Uh, it's a quick time film. Don't worry too much about the details here. What the main thing you guys need to know is that the, the types of files are associated with what? So again, MP4, All everything here is a video. MP4 video, MOV video, WMV video, AVI video. Now, the thing that keeps popping up in some of these is that there's a V, right? So that's probably one way to recognize if something is a video file because on the exam questions I've seen, they tend to keep it relatively simple. So MOV, WMV, AVI, um, MKV as well. This is another one. FLV. So these are probably the only ones that you will see on an exam. And it will always go back to something along the lines of why would you choose a file that's compressed over a file that's not compressed? Why would you choose this codec over that codec? Why would you choose this one if file size is an issue for someone who's trying to export a video? We have to link it back to something. And again, I will touch on that at the very end. Now we're on to images. First, we have JPEG or JPG. These are both exactly the same thing. However, some operating systems or some systems in general, they prefer JPG and some prefer JPEG. It really doesn't matter. They're exactly the same file format, right? We have PNG, GIF. I say GIF. Some people say GIF. TIFF, PSD, not used as much as this can only be opened and created using Photoshop and Adobe program. Now, PDF... I wouldn't really class this as an image format because it's a portable document format. You can have text in here as well. It's normally used when you have a Word document, for example, it's normally used to export that Word document in a format that's no longer editable by anyone else. Now, these are the only ones I'm going to focus on and maybe RAW. RAW is an image format that is uncompressed. Some phones can do it and most cameras, most professional cameras will use this type of uh, file format because you get a lot more data in your picture so you can edit it better it just has more detail overall finally we have document formats i guess the most popular one is probably going to be word document or word documents so we have doc and docx the only difference between these two is that doc is the older version which is still compatible with docx the newer version so doc is old DOCX is new. If you have an old one, you can still bring it into the new one. And in some cases, you can bring a new one into the old one, but it might change some of the font and just the way it looks in general because the newer version just has more features. HTM and HTML, again, same thing. HTML is the language or the, the, the organization used for websites. That's something we're going to have to go into at some point as well. Then we have ODT, Open Document Format. This is essentially an alternative to Microsoft's Word document. Think of it like that. We have PDF. And again, I mentioned before, PDFs, I would say, are mainly used for documents. And documents can have images and text. We have XLSX and XLS. Again, Microsoft. This is the old version, Excel files, and this is the new version. And you can go back and forth in most cases, but the one with the X is the newer version. ODS, uh, spreadsheets again, but this is again the open, the free version of the Excel format. Okay, so they, mo they more or less do exactly the same thing. We have PowerPoint, and again, we have old and we have new. We have text file, the basic text file, TXT. So it might be bob.txt that's how it looks so here's a list of all of them again now the thing i have to keep stressing know what file format is for what type of file so you might have a i don't know a random question that says a student is trying to open an xlsx file what program would be most appropriate for them to open this file with and because we know that this is a spreadsheet and this is a excel file we can say microsoft excel we can say any program that opens or is able to edit spreadsheets, right? So we have to be able to associate the file extensions. So the file extension is simply these letters after the dot. So dot .xls, dot .docx, that's the file extension. We have to be able to associate file extensions with the program. Now, they are pretty simple in most cases, 
because DOC and DOC ex the documents, the word documents and the file extension kind of denotes or explains what the file is going to have inside of it. There are three things we need to pay attention to or to have highlighted when thinking about file types. The three things are compatibility, quality, and file size. So compatibility means how many things can this thing work with. For example, MP3 is probably the most um, compatible file format for audio because most smart devices can play MP3, right? Quality, MP3 is good, is very good, but maybe WAV, W-A-V, might be better for quality because it retains more of the original data. When we go to file size, that might be important for some people. For myself, I want relatively small files because I don't have big 3,000 pound headphones to listen to music. So MP3 might be best for me. However, if you're somebody who is, I don't know, editing the next Marvel movie, you don't want bad audio. You want the best possible audio you could get so that when editing, it's a lot better and it's a lot easier for you. So maybe you might choose Wave, right? So again, compatibility, quality, and file size. And compatibility simply means how many devices can this work with.